Today, I'm here to make a case that regions, towns, and small places can have as vital an arts and culture sector as large metropolitan centers. It is simply a myth that big cities alone can reap the benefits that the sector provides. It starts with the answers that you provide to a few simple questions. First, what value do you place in arts and culture? Think of the music you listen to, the books you watch, the films you, 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 books you read or the films you watch, or the visual art that surrounds you in a given day. Second, what value do you place in arts and culture where you live? Has your life been touched by community festivities, celebrations, restaurants, cultural venues and spaces? For most of us, arts and culture enriches our lives with meaning and joy. It gives us a sense of belonging. It connects us to our communities. It's a key factor in uh, quality of life of where we live and attracting people and investment. It builds sustainable communities. So then, what value should our regional and municipal governments place in arts and culture? The answer is a lot. Our local leaders have to be aware that a vibrant arts and culture sector builds community pride and social cohesion, celebrates and embraces cultural diversity, attracts local economic development by offering a higher quality of life, generates and produces tangible economic benefits through the job creation and spending on arts and entertainment, and provides places with a competitive brand advantage that grows, that can grow place brand equity over time. So, Prince Edward County is a case in point. Um, it's if these benefits of a vibrant arts and culture sector that are so self-evident to, to large cities, or somehow if it's it's not lesser known if they can be transferable to the suburbs or smaller places which are mistakenly thought of as cultural wastelands. In the 1990s, Prince Edward County, this rural community neighboring Kingston, Ontario, experienced an economic renaissance following years of stagnation simply by repositioning itself as a unique cultural place. Municipal planners developed and implemented a cultural vision that leveraged the array of Prince Edward County's cultural assets and focused on quality of place. And the net result was, is that Prince Edward County attracted people who want to live there, tourists who want to visit there, and a wealth of culture investment, its local economy boomed. The planners understood that in order for Prince Edward County to develop a strong cultural brand, the people who lived there had to see the place as being vibrant. They had to buy into the core values of what that new uh, Prince Edward County brand stood for. So. If the objective is to culturally build and brand a place, what strategies can planners employ to accomplish this? And this is best answered by looking at a case study of York Region. York Region sits north of Toronto. It's composed of nine municipalities. It borders to Georgina in the north, uh, Vaughan to the south, is home to one million people, and many of you live there. So, when you think of York Region, tell me, do you think of it as being a cultural magnet? I would not be surprised if many of you did not think so. But the truth of the matter is, is that York Region is a culturally happening place. It boasts of unique festivals, theaters, galleries, museums, 
community events. However, much of this and many of those are highly localized, not well known across the region. And of course, the York region fights with the pull of Toronto to its south. So, what can York region do to develop the creative and economic and social potential of its arts and culture sector? What needs to change? Well, to start, planners can lead a branding initiative that plays a high value and importance on the role that arts and culture plays in creating an attractive place brand identity and personality. They can develop a master cultural plan. They can invest more in the arts. They can aggressively market their arts and cultural scene. But importantly, the people who live in York Region must see the place as vibrant. And this requires educating them not only what there is to do in their own backyard, but also involving them in the co-creation and the consumption of local culture. So one of the most exciting opportunities to fuse the York Region arts and culture sector in the coming years is actually the 2015 Pan Am Games. These games are said to be the largest sporting event to come to Canada, even bigger than the Vancouver Winter Olympics. Planning for these games has already started in Toronto. The games will be held, by the way, in GTA, including York Region. And actually, large sporting events are coupled with arts and culture activity. So the Pan Am Games can serve as a catalyst to connect York Region's diverse arts and culture community towards creating a region-wide signature celebration or series of events leading up to the games and thereafter. The games can inspire and mobilize municipalities, culture providers, businesses and citizens to create engaging experiences for their communities. To start, or, you know, or, or to, to do this, uh, key stakeholders from the public, profit, and nonprofit sectors will need to collaborate to achieve a common vision, mutual buy-in for the project, and shared ownership of it. Creating a culture uh, possibility can also ensure the project's success, and this requires tapping into stakeholder networks and resources, examining new funding models. But in conclusion, places, no matter how large, how small, no matter where they are located, that place a high value on arts and culture receive large dividends. They become more desirable to live in, their brands grow stronger, and they thrive economically. Arts and culture shapes quality of life, as well as the lives and the attitudes of people like us who are affected by the places in which we live. All right. Thank you. <laughs>